watching football in the kitchen sink. Get ready for in-depth conversation from the world of high school, college, and pro football. Plus some insight about the rest of the world. All this, along with some fun and humor along the way. Pull up a chair, grab a coffee or a beer, and join us. It's football and the kitchen sink. Here are your hosts, Coach Schumann and Coach D. Pascali. Oh, welcome to the podcast. Uh, sorry we missed you all yesterday, day after Super Bowl Sunday. I guess that's the uh, official day of uh, – not official day off, but uh, definitely a day off for me from football. I'm sure the pundits were all over it, but uh, – We took a little break after lots and lots of snow. We had uh, a fantastic Super Bowl, and uh, normally I'd be on with my host, Coach D, but he's uh, experiencing some power outages, and um, so it'll it'll be me today. And uh, so I I, I wanted to cover a couple of cool things that uh, everything, you know, for the most part, Super Bowl today. I uh, welcome any and all of your your analysis. What's going on, Omar? It's good to see you, man. Uh, yep, we're, we're definitely going to hit it up. I'll I'll, uh, I'll definitely. Uh, um, <laughs> I figured the comments will come in today. The Super Bowl was rigged. Nice outfit, um, and uh, uh, really break it down. First of all, um, I thought. There was, uh, first of all, biggest surprise was that the Chiefs couldn't do anything uh, on on defense. And um, a lot of the Chiefs fans are real upset about it. Uh, And and I think there's a a lot of things that they want to blame. But the only thing they could blame is the fact that uh, they couldn't get anything going on offense. And uh, I think that was a huge part of it. Um, Tampa Bay's defense completely locked down uh, the Chiefs for most part and focused primarily on the two best players that the Chiefs have on the offensive side of the ball, uh, which is Tyreek Tyre Hill and uh, Travis Kelsey. Um, and by taking away <clears throat> the things that he could do, um, it really, really – limited their offense um at times they uh, they went to uh uh Hilaire a little bit and, and he got a little bit of things going but he's not yet uh in a position to be able to uh to carry the load the other running back was clearly uh Williams was clearly not uh on par against his Bucks defense and and the biggest story and I'll get to um <clears throat> uh I'll get to to uh, thank you, Omar. I'll get to Brady and and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, and what they did offensively, and, uh, and hopefully I'll get a chance to break down some of these uh, it, it, things. But what was really crazy was the 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 deep the defense of the Buccaneers. First of all, taking away the biggest part of the Chiefs, which is their down the field passing game. So everything predicates. Uh, on the Chiefs being able to go down the field. So down the field with Tyreek, um, uh, down the field uh, with, you know, off of any sort of uh, action and then uh, utilizing Travis Kelsey however they want to. And that first part getting takeaway was a problem from. Second part is that the injuries uh, at, at tackle and so moving the right tackle to the left tackle, which meant you had two tackles that essentially uh, were newbies for this game was a problem. And there was no way that uh, Shaq Barrett and Pierre Paul was going to be stopped um, by guys that – it had been hard for, for guys who were all-stars at that position to stop those two at the top of their game. But definitely guys that <clears throat> had two weeks of practice um, could barely do anything. And uh, the pass rush was unbelievable. I mean, Shaq Barrett just just obliterated them from a pass rushing standpoint with speed and power. Pierre Paul, um, maybe not as young as he he was, uh, but he still has so much power to be able to literally take the the tackle and drive him back. 
Their run game, which has been okay all year, one of the things I firmly believe when you get and, – and this is something that um, I would say that Tom Brady, and if you watch the way that on offensively they played the game, once they saw they could run the ball, that's the experience of knowing what has worked in Super Bowls. The Patriots were not known for, for running the ball, um, but in the Super Bowls, if you look at their past Super Bowl performances – they ran the ball incredibly well. And then that same exact thing happened to uh, to take place again with Tampa. And they <clears> – <throat> even though sometimes I think they went to play action a little bit too much early on, Tampa, I thought they should have ran even more. I thought that mix was just uh, uh, unstoppable. And uh, once they got that first touchdown to Gronk off the play action on the run, it set the tone that – that the Chiefs were really going to have a problem handling both the run game and the play-action pass game. Put the Chiefs in a position uh, where they were going to be guessing. And if you remember, if you watched my last podcast, um, the big issue that I said was going to be a problem as they started going through. So I, I originally I – was, I was rooting for the Bucks, but uh, I thought logically the Chiefs – might have had too much on offense, but when I when I broke it down unit by unit, and me and, and Coach D broke it down unit by unit, the thing that I said is that I thought that uh, Tom Brady would throw three or more touchdowns. I didn't know that Mahomes would not be able to match that. That was something that I wasn't sure about. Um, and I noticed why I used a lot of Reynolds and Fournette instead of the past game. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean the the you know, the Bucks ran the Bucks ran for net, and they ran um, oh, twenty. I can't believe it's slipped my mind number twenty seven, but he's a heck of a back too. Um, and so <clears throat> that that run game, that play action pass game was very difficult for the Chiefs to stop. They had a push the, uh, on the offensive line, and so what I'm going back to what I originally said was unit for unit. Okay, unit for unit. Where I broke it down. Uh, we said quarterbacks was a push. We said um, running backs was really uh, – James w- is uh, the other running back. Um, and and uh, Jones, Ron Jones. Um, at running back, I thought the Bucks had an edge. I thought the offensive line, I thought the Bucks had an edge, especially due to injuries. Uh, I thought the defensive line, the whole defensive unit, the Bucks had an edge. So I was almost going against my – the the whole crowd would really say, Hey, yeah, the chiefs, cause they won last year. But as I went unit by unit, special teams, I gave the edge to the chiefs and you know, it looked like uh, the Chiefs for the most part held, held true to that. But overall the defensive unit of the Buccaneers was so much more dominant than, uh, than the chiefs offensive unit. And then the other thing that I thought was really an issue for the chiefs and, and you saw it like and everyone was touting this um these miracle passes by Mahomes so it is amazing what he can do can, how he can move his body still get the ball to the right area and people are like ah oh, if the chief, chiefs caught those balls here's what happens when the buccaneer i mean the chiefs quarterback Mahomes is forced into running all around going back 20 yards coming forward making miraculous throws even if they're on target two main things happens Number one, he puts himself into a level of uh, tiredness and exhaustion where eventually they get some easy sacks because of the fact that he's running around um, just trying to keep the play alive, okay? Uh, And then number two, the second thing that is crazy, that is really, really crazy, is that when the ball goes down the field and there's 10 seconds, 8, 10 seconds, he's running around like that and he doesn't have that kind of protection – what essentially happens is you got wide receivers that start to get tired and they start to drop balls. So even though there's a, there's an amazing pass that gets down the field, you're going to have a ball that's going to be dropped here and there. And that's what happened to the chiefs. Even when he throws the ball 40 yards down, uh, falling on his side to be able to make, to make a play. So that's essentially what happens there. And so over the course of the game, that's where you come out with, with zero points, not an ability to run the ball. And everyone could blame the referees all they want. That's, you know, um, a, a call here or a call there. The truth is, you know, the one the, the key component of the game, the key play of the game was when um, 
the Buccaneers had at the end of the half got the penalty, and then they came down the field. Okay, and when they got, uh, they got the exactly uh, w- when they they got down the field, the Buccaneers, um, and then they drew a situation where they threw another pass straight up the field. Tom Brady, if you remember, um, they had called timeout. Uh, they, uh, I don't remember if it was a penalty or it was a timeout, but Tom Brady waved off the new play call, went with the play right down the middle of the field where he just took it, fired it. The deep defensive back didn't even have a chance to turn, which means he was grabbing, got an easy uh, uh, penalty, puts the ball at the one, throws the ball in Tony Brown, and basically that, that puts uh, the Chiefs in a major hole. Um, I think also – Definitely was a huge – some level of distraction. I don't know if it's a huge distraction, but some level of distraction, everything that was going on with the Chiefs with Andy Reid's son, um, the accident and and the the uh, terrible thing of uh, the two kids that were injured, um, one severely. I don't know the, the updated situation of that, but um, that was definitely a distraction for what they're doing. Um, you know, after it's all said and done and, and you know – there, there are issues there on that staff that now you not, not only did you lose two coaches, I don't know how, how much of impact that part out of the game was just the distraction overall right before the Super Bowl. That is a an issue that does affect uh, the team somewhat. So all that um, all that coupled in and, and a big part of this whole story is obviously hopefully those kids are OK. That's the most important part. Um, but because obviously uh, games can go on and, and they'll come and go, but you know someone's life uh, hopefully doesn't get lost to that situation. So and and hopefully you know if there is there's going to be repercussions. If there was you know red reports that there might be brain damage to one of the children, and so if that's in these case, there's going to be uh, a, a a real big uh, um, real big issue there. So. <clears throat> so as far as you know, early on, uh, where it, and I'll, I'll put a couple of clips up in, in a second. The run game with Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette is the biggest thing offensively that catapulted the Buccaneers, and then Tom Brady's ability to have fantastic timing in his passing and the protection he had up front. He was never. Touched all game. Contrast that with Patrick Mahomes, who was running for his life half the game. Right from the beginning, he was scrambling. He looked like, oh, you know, he's escaping. But over time, those guys corral him and end up making the plays there. So, some some really interesting. And then then I'll I'll, I'll show a few uh, um, takes here. Just hang on, quick here. I'll pull some stuff up. I thought it was, and then we got to talk about the. the uh, <laughs> the streaker. So let's see what we got here. All right, let's see. So I I I, I put uh I thought one of the funniest moments. So here was here was uh <laughs> and and, and I, it shows you the kind of first of all the selfless it, it, the the uh the attitude that the, the Buccaneers had, which was a a philosophy that they were going to play 100 miles an hour all game long, keep coming. They had uh, a total positive mindset towards everything, um, and, and they were going to get after it. So I'll show you. I love this interview. This is just a quick clip with uh, – with a uh, Shaq Barrett here. Let me actually, that's not it there. That's not it. Let me see here. Okay. Uh, all right. I love this right here. I thought this was great. 77, he was talking so much. He made me mad. <laughs> <laughs> 
77, he was talking so much, he made me mad. <laughs> 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 all what did he say then? What did he say? It what did he say? I, I what don't even say? know what he was saying because it didn't matter. I was talking to him. <laughs> what did you say? Hey, I told him he was a scrub. He was trash. I got to take a train home. And get back on the flight. Can't get back on the flight tonight. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I, I mean, Shaq Parrott's uh, um, – Gives you a little insight into what's what was going on in the game. I mean, both him and 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 uh, uh, left the, the the it was it would have been their right tackle was just unbelievably going back and forth the whole entire game and 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 just how much good time they're having, not just playing the game, but but how much a good time. I'll give you another thing I thought was great too. I this is my this is my All quick right. analysis. And uh, moving around. Oh, he's got. Here's our streaker oh, friend. Here he is. It looks like he has good size. Someone and had come in and moving around. Oh, he's got someone pursuing him. Yeah, it makes a move. Uh, first move is the X button. He could get. <laughs> oh, I thought that was hilarious. Oh, that that, that was hilarious. Um, the streaker that was funny. Uh, Omar asks, is Bruce Arians coaching next season? It's a great question. Um, I think, yeah. I mean, why not? They got the whole team coming back. So I don't see why they wouldn't. Uh, Tom Brady's coming back. Uh, Gronk's coming back. The whole crew's coming back. So there's no reason why they couldn't be uh, a, a duplicate situation there. So. Definitely. I'll show you another. Uh, let's see if we can get some, some other really good. And it, um, let's see. Oh, and with the speaking of the the streaker, amazing article I read that I don't know if it's true or not that he bet, bl- placed a prop bet that someone would go across the streaker, and um, as it turned out, put like. Uh, I don't remember how much it was, but he ended up winning three hundred fifty. I want to say he put five thousand dollars on, and he ended up winning three hundred fifty thousand dollars on the prop bet. So there you go. Um, maybe it was fifty. I don't remember what it was, but he won, won a prop bet by himself streaking. <laughs> That's one way to make sure a bet happens to to yourself. Uh, uh, take it under control. All right, let's uh, get this up. Okay. All right. So we'll break down for for just so <clears throat> the Bucks have been running inside zone. They've run wide zone, and uh, and just been just completely dominating. And they do they do this from this exact set. And I'll show you. Um, let me see if I can pull up. This is the first touchdown. Okay. I'll pull it up. So the play that they've been running the whole entire time was this down. Uh, well, they've been running. They ran it a couple of ways. So they ran it with uh, just a one wide receiver down. They all down blocked. Okay. Across uh, with Gronk as a wing or his tight end and then left the corner on an island. But here. Okay, this is kind of an indicator that there may be a pass the situation that they they took the two receivers, put them away, uh, running this play action. Gronk comes all the way flat across, catches it in the flat. Um, after running the ball down, they have to be real concerned, especially the defensive end. They're in man to man, which you get a lot of the time down inside the ten yard line. There it is.
look how open he is. I mean, this is just um, – look how far up the field for, for the run. It is just – they're all fighting pressure versus pressure, run blocking it looks like to them. I mean, that's just stealing. That's the first one. Great call there. That really was a fantastic call um, right up the alley of – Tom Brady and the Buccaneers, that H-back play action play, you see it all the time in college. You see it all the time in the pros. It always works down on the goal line, okay? Always works, especially when your run game is really starting to dominate. Now, <clears throat> this was the Antonio Brown. So one of the things I thought – with the honey badger, that was a mistake. Was not that I mean these guys are all pros. Not that it makes the biggest uh, difference whether they they um, talk smack or not or get out of the game. But I felt like Tyran Matthew going at Tom Brady, getting fired up. I don't know if it did per se made him play better, but it made Tyran Matthew press more. And definitely made Brady more of where he was to, to, to go at him. So he did that several times with several different people. And here's a good example of it. This is down. And early on, I didn't realize that this was actually uh, – during the game, I didn't realize at first that, that was, this play was on Taran Matthew. Coverage is not bad, but just I don't think you're covering Antonio Brown in space here. Okay, this is obviously a heavy run set um, other than leaking out at the, uh, this tight end here. This is a situation where you have a one on one matchup. You're thinking it's first and goal. They're probably going to run. Maybe they'll try to run the ball in, but there's not much time. There's 10 seconds left. <clears throat> so play action right there. Antonio Brown working towards the out slams his foot. Into the ground, Tyran Matthew, who's a great football player, but definitely not quick enough to handle him one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, I am a little surprised that that was the matchup. The the Wide open. I mean, it, it, the timing of the pass um, by Brady is perfect. Pulls up. He's actually almost a tad late on the throw. And... Um, but wide open. Let's see if Gronk is open as well. Look at Gronk up on the top of the screen. I mean, they had two guys. He went to Gronk, Gronk in the corner. He probably had that too. So there's another example of, of just a back-breaking play. Great example of that right there. Look, Mike Evans looked uncoverable at times. Antonio Brown made plays when he needed to. Obviously, he's got tremendous talent. Gronkowski with six catches. Gronkowski plays about half the game. He doesn't play the whole entire game anymore, which probably saves his body, which is probably why he was happy to get out of New England. He would be going every single play and then physically get beat up. Um, that extra rest helped Gronkowski, especially in a Super Bowl game. He's not as young. And, and, and uh, for one game, if he's properly rested, he is as good as they come, the, it gets. Uh, the running game – what was unstoppable, and uh, I, I just think you know Shaq Barrett, his quickness off the ball. There, I, I haven't seen a uh, a outside linebacker call him outside linebacker. He's almost like a defensive end. Um, so it was pretty unbelievable. And uh, I, I thought, you, yeah, some of the matchups he had run matchups. He had linebackers that were not as quick on. Gronkowski on DB, I mean, uh, on wide receivers at times. Uh, Taran Matthew shouldn't be on Antonio Brown there. I know he's he's a, a, a very athletic safety, but his quickness and speed, Brown, is too quick. That's just an easy, easy steal for him. So 
see if we can find some other cool moments here. So uh, let's see. I think one of the big other things, just, oh, I just want to pull up the numbers here from this game. All right, let me pull this up here. By the way, if you were part of the NUC Sports uh, Super Bowl, the boxes, we actually had two winners. They got shirts going out for them this week. Two winners. They both picked the 7-3, which was in the first period. Uh, we also had someone try to s slide in there after the first quarter was over. Pick 7-3, very smart, but I caught it. Um, <clears throat> and normally I wouldn't care, <coughs> but it was pretty blatant. So uh, so let's go. So 31-9, Patrick Mahomes was 26 of 49 for 270 yards, two INTs. That's, you know, I thought it was going to be a shootout with Tom Brady throwing a bunch of touchdowns. He said he had to throw three or more to win. I think he threw three. And uh, they ran, you know, Clyde Edwards Hilaire ran nine times for 64 yards. Mahomes five for 33, but was sacked a bunch of times. They don't count that in the stats. They couldn't get Tyreek Hill going the way they wanted to, uh, even though if you look at the numbers, they have a bunch of catches. Travis Kelsey is 10 for 133. Yes, he's a fantastic player. Yes, Tyreek gets 7 for 73. The issue is that none of these other receivers could 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 get anything going. Harmon couldn't get anything going. I mean, that, that was a problem. They were able to take him away with the safeties and the cover guy. Um, and... Uh, uh, Tampa Bay has the best defensive back coach uh, in the country in uh, Nick Rapone. Uh, he was he actually when he was with the Cardinals with Bruce Arian, they had the best defensive pa defensive backs. They had Patrick Peterson. They had Tyran Matthew. Now over here with with, with the Buccaneers, um, uh, Winfield and and a host of other guys just kept getting better and better under him. Nick Rapone is the best DB coach, bar none, in the NFL. Um, and I happen to have been coached by him. I, you know, when I, when I played at UConn, he was my defense coordinator there. And he was always great defensive back coach. Back then, that was always his specialty. He knows how to get those guys to play. He knows how to get the most out of them. His intensity is, is unmatched uh, as a coach. And defensive backs respond to him. I mean, he gets them to rise to the occasion. I've seen it in college. i seen it uh, see at the NFL. I saw it when he was uh, with the Cardinals. I've seen it here again with the Buccaneers. Uh, I see the way that his defensive backs talk to him and stay, uh, talk about him and have stayed in touch with him over the years. Those relationships, that, it, that prime time gets him to get the most out of his guys. And the experience of all the years – so happy to, to see Nick Rapone uh, get a Super Bowl championship uh, after being in a game for, for that many years. Um, good friends with – obviously, he's good friends with Bruce Arians. They played in college together, roommates. And, uh, and and by the way, Bruce Arians is one of the first uh, – dual. I read a whole article about that. He's one of the first dual threat quarterbacks back in the day. Um, so Tom Brady's stats, let's go to – I know I digress from here, here and there. But I'm on my own, so hopefully you're enjoying enjoying the show. We're we're doing a deep dive analysis into the Super Bowl, and then I'll take some takes of 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 some of these pundits and what they said. Uh, first of all, before I talk about Tom Brady and what he did, Tom Brady for many years, I used to think that Peyton Manning was the best quarterback uh, ever, and Tom Brady has proven over and over again that he is indeed the best quarterback of all time. He was 21 of 29, 201 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, he got the ball spread around to as many guys as possible. Uh, Leonard Fournette did a great job getting the ball down to Leonard Fournette, Gronkowski, Mike Evans, Cameron Brait. Um, those guys just, just were uncoverable. Um, the running game of Leonard Fournette and Ronald Jones combined for uh, 150 yards and 28 carries. Fournette for 89, Jones for 61. Um, pretty impressive. Defensively, you know, Devin White, eight tackles. I mean, every week he's the top guy. 
eight tackles and INT again. I don't know how he does it, but he does win field with four and one INT. Uh, sack wise, we had Sue had one and a half, Shaquille Barrett had one, Cameron Gill had a half. I guess Pierre Paul didn't get credit, but he got a lot of pressures. So <clears throat> they were. They were exceptional there. The other story, Chiefs punter struggled in this game mightily. Mightily struggled. And uh, Chiefs defensively. That's Sorens. It was okay. I mean, I just didn't see, Chris Jones played well at times, but not, not consistently. And uh, they just couldn't get the ball their weapons. So, all right, let's see. So my, my big thing is I, I love this. Max Kellerman shoots his mouth off about everything uh, and uh, doesn't know much. I mean, he was a pretty good boxing an uh, analyst, but uh, now that they got him doing everything, he said that Tom Brady was washed up, and, and, and <laughs> here he is winning the Super Bowl. It's hilarious when people who don't know anything, literally just a talking head like Max Kellerman who doesn't have a clue. Uh, uh, and, and so it, it's, it's pretty crazy to see that, um, act, men NFL coaches been coached by guys that were NFL coaches, <laughs> um, quite a few actually. So <clears throat> it's, it becomes a thing where when you predict, predict against Tom Brady and his regimen at some point he will get old, but it is amazing at 43 what he's able to do. And it's, it's pretty impressive. It really, really is impressive how he's continuously this workout regimen. I, I saw he gets up at five 30. He's got two workouts a day in the off season in season. Um, he has one workout a day besides his uh, besides practice. He's watching film all the way through. He meets with his coaches I mean, the, the amount of work he puts in is, is something that's really, really incredible. Uh, it's 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 such an interesting thing to see someone like Bruce Arians get to the championship this late in his career and win a championship, and how he, you know, I saw a great interview with Nick Rapone, defense defensive back coach. Great interview, yes, just like Mayweather, excellent, excellent Griffin. Great call. Um, Bruce Arians, who had traditionally been a guy who called the offensive game at every other, even though he's been a head coach at every other place, this year when he came back decided that he was going to – Hey, Troy. Wait, where's Derek? There's no Derek today, buddy. <laughs> Why? Uh, it's just me. Why? Well, that's it. And who are you talking to? I'm talking to the to the fans. See all the fans here? Whoa, that's a lot. I think those are the same people. Over and over. All right, again. your mom is calling you. Give me, is that the same Give person? me a kiss. Come on, baby. I'll see you later, buddy. Come on, Do you want all right, I'll, you, Come on, tell tell everybody your disappointment with uh the Chiefs. Oh no, don't that. You tell them. All right. <laughs> Okay, your mom's calling. I'll, I'll be up in a little bit. So, okay. So, uh, so, uh, what was I saying? Oh, so Bruce Arians decided this year, and when he came back, and I saw this in an interview. That's right. I, I saw that in an interview with Nick Rapone. They were talking with him about the Super Bowl. What was the difference? the difference between coaching with Bruce Arians in the past and this year. And the big thing was he did not call the offense. And by him not calling the offense allowed him to have the flexibility to help both the offensive side and the defensive side step back, especially in his, at, now that he's older, and really look at the defense as well and give his input there. And, and I think that – you know, you see Nick Saban obviously does that at the college level. There are times where you need to be a play caller, and there are times where it's better to let someone else play call. Uh, it really depends on your own situation. 
But with this team and bringing in Tom Brady, that allowed Byron Leftwich and Tom Brady to really work together to figure out the best solutions. Okay. When Bruce Arians, as now an elder statesman as a coach, uh, focuses more on the relationships and the building of the team, focuses on finding fine-tuning the defense and offense and looking at everything from a 5,000-foot view and getting into the details that can help both sides. Uh, that really, I think, elevated him. And by having Byron Leftwich in there, who is going to be able to have that relationship as a, as a fellow QB like Tom Brady, he might be actually younger than Tom Brady, but as a fellow QB, that relationship, it became a relationship where they could go back and forth on calls, much like the one at the end of the game where they threw, got the uh, pass interference. He wanted to keep that play. And you could see that he wanted that one-on-one -on -one matchup because either the guy was going to catch it for the end zone or was going to be an interference call, give them great position. Those kind of things made a big difference. And if you get a chance to pull up that interview, it's on YouTube with Rapone talking about uh, uh, Bruce Arians. Um, he, I think the interview talks – it might be titled um, him discussing Winfield but and, and his growth, but there's a big part of it where he talked about what what changed with Bruce Arians uh, for this year. Really, really great stuff. And if you really love the game of football and you want to understand the mindset of how a coach who's been very good uh, but never got to the mountaintop figured out a couple things. Obviously, Tom Brady is a big part of that, how to get the pieces in place. Uh, and then let sometimes uh, less is more allowing everybody else to do it uh, made a huge difference. Sometimes that's not the answer. In this case, it was the answer. So really, really interesting. And if you get a chance, you know, you know, check out, check out that interview you there. What's going on? Um, hope everybody's doing well today. Uh, we avoided the, the snow. In uh, New Jersey, I guess it was supposed to snow. It's supposed to, it, it says every day that it's supposed to snow here, uh, other than tomorrow, I think, and <laughs> which is crazy. Um, I want to say hello to everybody. Give everyone a quick shout out. And <clears throat> so, <clears throat> though that, that's you know the biggest take takeaway of it, the combination of. The changes that Bruce Arians made on that that team. Ah, oh, we have a guest from Turkey. Hello, sir. And um, uh, uh, the changes he made on the team, the changes that he made, uh, with you know allowing Byron Leftwich to have more flexibility with Tom Brady, um, the defensive players and the other players that he got on the offensive side of the ball to complement Mike Evans. Uh, to complement um, to to complement Tom Brady, getting Antonio Brown, signing him, showing that Tom Brady and everybody knows it now, obviously. So I'm not I'm not stating anything that people don't already know, but Tom Brady is what was the most important element. Nobody really knew, but we now know. Not that DeBelichick. Uh, thank you, Omar. I appreciate it. Uh, not that Belichick isn't a great coach. Demand is a great coach. It's hilarious that people are saying that he's great. And by the way, there's some great memes going around about Belichick. I mean, if you want to just laugh your butt off, um, I mean, there's a couple of great memes with with Mahomes and and uh, Tom Brady that I had me rolling. Some people take these things too seriously, but it is funny. It is funny. Um, and uh, I, I, you know, I gotta pull up this best, this best one. Hold on, I gotta pull this up. Where is it? Where is it? <sighs> Let me see. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, let's see. Let me see. Yeah, I can't find it. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, I got. Uh, can't find it. There's a great video with uh, um, Kevin Hart and 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 Joe Namath. 
uh, I don't remember what movie it was, but where the old guys come out and take the young guys and they said they could take it easy. And everyone said that's Mahomes and uh, Brady telling them to take it easy, but he did it. It, it's it's pretty pretty funny, and I agree, Omar. Yeah, I, I think I, I think Belichick may have gotten there at some point, but Brady's that much of an impact that maybe he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't win. I don't know. Does he win a championship without Brady? I mean, if you think about it, Drew Bledsoe before Brady Bledsoe went down and Brady took over. Drew Bledsoe was an excellent quarterback, and they were winning some games with him. Um. But he and he had been to the Super Bowl with um, Bill Parcells, I believe, was the coach of the Patriots. And <clears throat> I think that uh, Belichick had good quarterback has had good quarterbacks, but Brady's so elite that he makes things happen. And you know, the only thing I can liken it to, and and I saw one, one of our uh, callers put in today or tech whatever you want to call it, texas said uh mayweather yes may the way mayweather dismantles people as far as from his strategy his scheme uh, as far as a boxer and how he is able to enact it and always be one step ahead of everybody uh, my other one is michael jordan in his prime michael jordan why people always say why why is michael jordan to you better than lebron james well lebron james is physically more dominant and could do things from a size standpoint that probably no one else could have ever done. Michael Jordan had athleticism, but also had the tenacity um, and the understanding of the game that is just light years ahead of everybody else and just raised everybody's levels to unbelievable levels. And Tom Brady, Michael Jordan, and I, I put it like it, it, these are re- you know I'm not talking about guys I, I I don't know I mean I know about players in the past but it's hard for me to equate too many players beyond my time period I'm 46 years old so could could there be somebody you know I don't know some say Johnny Knight I don't I don't know but I'm saying modern era Michael Jordan Mayweather. Tom Brady, Tiger Woods, Tiger Woods in his prime of what he was able to do, and then the ability after his prime to come back and win after being basically out of the mix. I mean, you're talking the the, the greatest of the greats in, in football. What's amazing about Tom Brady, and I don't know if everybody talks about this or not, but, and I think the the biggest difference, maybe Tiger Woods responsible for himself. Okay. Um, Mayweather responsible for himself. Michael Jordan responsible for himself and four other people at the same time. Tom Brady responsible for himself plus 10 others on the offensive side of the ball. And then motivationally with defense and special teams, you're, you're talking another 30 players that he has to continue to have in the right direction, which is unique. For one piece to be that important in football, and quarterback's the most important position. I get that. I understand that. I, you know, when I coach, that's the center of my offense. Okay. But for one person to be able to make that big of an impact, to have seven championships, seven championships is unbelievable unbelievable there is no athlete that in a team sport has ever done anything close to what tom brady has been able to do no one has been able to do anything close and i was never a tom brady fan i am a tom brady fan because of what he does on the field you cannot question it mahomes is going to be a great quarterback. He already is an excellent quarterback. He's a pro, a, a pro. Um, if he continues on his pace, he'll probably win some more championships. He's got a long way to go to become Tom Brady. Okay, at times he does amazing things, but he's got a long way to go. And I think one of the things that 
we'll 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 start to settle him in is how he starts to utilize more and more of his personnel all the time. That's going to be that's the sign of what Tom Brady does. That's unique. He uses all his receivers all the time. Uh, Mahomes is close. He he probably will get there. Uh, he's the next guy that could. And then we'll see what Trevor Lawrence uh, when if he gets drafted if he's got that kind of talent we'll we'll see soon enough. Uh, it's going to be tough uphill battle. But Tom Brady, what he's done, seven Super Bowls. Yeah, I heard it said that the interview Gronkowski. What makes him? If I, you know, some of these I had earlier, but I've watched so much stuff. They asked him, what makes Tom Brady so great. What makes Tom Brady? so great you know and is he is he just one of the guys and Gronkowski said the thing that is so great about Tom Brady is he is just one of the guys players young and old Gronk to rookies can come up to him and ask him questions and he will answer their questions for them he is a leader not just because he's a great football player but because he takes the time to invest in his players, you would think someone that, that is as big a celebrity as he is, he's married to it, who at one time was the top supermodel in the world. Okay, she's worth half a billion herself. The level that they're at, they are they're not in the clouds. He has everything going for him, but still knows how to relate to all the players, no matter who they are, in order to get the common objective done. And that's that's the key thing that he does. And Gronkowski talked a lot about it. And uh, I've never seen Gronkowski talk about any other quarterback like that, not that he would want to play for any other quarterback. But that is the difference between Tom Brady and everybody else. He invests in everybody on the team not just in himself. He invests in himself. He expects everything of himself, but he invests in all the other players and is an open to their questions. So if you're seeking greatness, his goal is to help you get there. And his experience of being at such a high level for so long rubs off on every single player, not because he just tells them, hey, I've been there, but he shows them the way. He shows them how to get where they want to go. He takes the time to answer their questions in the locker room. He's one of the guys. He spends more time, not just more time because, because he wants to be great, but he wants everybody else to be great. And not only everybody else to be great, but to feel comfortable about the process. That's what makes Tom Brady different than everyone else. Okay, there are there's a lot of quarterbacks that do it that maybe don't have his talent. Tom Brady has the talent, the leadership, the knowledge, and what I always call the X factor. And he's got the greatest X factor of all. There is no quarterback in the history of the NFL that has the X factor that he has. Tom Brady had not just the clout, but the courage when he felt in order for him to be better, he, he had his TB12 training facility. He had his uh, uh, strength and conditioning coach that he worked with, knew that it was essential to, to getting him better. He had the courage to go ahead and utilize it when it was discouraged. Okay. Not because he wasn't a team guy, but because he saw what, could be he's the elon musk of football elon musk of football he's personable he's a great player he's not aloof even though people would think he would be aloof he's not aloof he's a regular guy and he has tremendous talent he's got all those things going for him and he's still doing it at a 43 and uh that's what makes him just unique. Uh, I spent half three quarters of the show on him. When when people question referees or all these other things, 
there's a lot of times when referees make mistakes, and there probably was mistakes made in that game. Um, but you weren't stopping Tom Brady for four quarters. Remember, they didn't score in the fourth quarter. They basically ran the ball, ended the game at 31 at the end of three periods. If they had to put up three more touchdowns, they could have. That's how dominant they were. I, at one point, said it was the most dominant performance since the Cowboys dismantled the Buffalo Bills under Troy Aikman. When Troy Aikman was at his peak, Troy Aikman was dismantling teams. Troy Aikman did it for a brief time period. Tom Brady did, has done it for an elongated time period with a gap of like six years where he had lost Super Bowls in a row, came back and then won additional a few Super Bowls uh, to give him seven. Seven. Seven Super Bowls for Tom Brady. Tampa Bay Buccaneers win their second Super Bowl. If anyone can remember who was the coach who won the first one, does anyone? John Gruden. The Tampa Bay Bucks won the Super Bowl with John Gruden. They are partying down in Ebor City. I saw some crazy things going on there. Uh, fun place to be. I've been down there. Uh, hung many a time with uh, my old roommate who was playing for the Tampa Bay Storm. And uh, great city, Tampa Bay. Uh, actually thought about moving to Tampa many times uh, when I was younger just because of uh, just an awesome atmosphere, the, the, the beach, the bay. Uh, just if you get a chance to go to Tampa, it's a great place uh, and a, a lot of fun. And a lot of good things there. Uh, what an amazing Super Bowl. Uh, a couple other side notes. Uh, great. One of the great co coaches, uh, Marty Schottenheimer, passed away. That's a shame. Um, 77 years, I think he had dementia and some other things going on. And um, that's a shame. Uh, but, I mean, fantastic coach, Marty Schottenheimer. So uh, rest in peace there. Drew Pearson. They came out with the Hall of Fame, and Drew Pearson, after much, much, much controversy, Drew Pearson got in the Hall of Fame. Does that mean that Cliff Branch is not far behind among the receivers, the great receivers uh, of the NFL, old NFL, that have not gotten into, uh, into the uh, Hall of Fame? Paid Manning, obviously, gets into the Hall of Fame. Pretty amazing. Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, I think. Let me see. Tom Brady came into the NFL. What year? He was drafted in 2000. Peyton Manning must have been like 96 or I don't know. Peyton Manning was... Peyton Manning was drafted in, let me see here, 98. So he's two years, but he's only a year older than Tom Brady, drafted in 98. Jeez, Peyton Manning are $248 million in his career as a player. What has Tom Brady earned? I don't know. It doesn't list it here. I'm curious what he's earned as a player. I'm sure, it's even more of that, more than that. All right. Well, great show. Um, I'm hope I broke the Super Bowl down for you guys in, in a way that uh, everybody could understand. Uh, some great. If you get a chance to rewatch this, some great clips, and we we you know broke down from nuts and bolts the uh, the Super Bowl. Uh, everybody have a great Tuesday, and uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow. Hopefully my co-host will be back because he has was off today, and uh, hopefully we'll have him. Thanks for listening to this episode of Football and the Kitchen Sink with Coach Schumann and Coach Deepascali. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. If you like what you heard, leave us a review, and be sure to tell a friend. We will meet you back here next time on Football in the Kitchen Sink.
Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.